Hello and welcome. In the context of the Indo-British Corridor and the emerging partnerships, who better to speak to than someone who's handling the tax consulting and the audit end? I'm joined by Richard Reiki, who heads Kepi MG in India. Let me get a quick recap on things as they've been in the last uh, year or so, since the last time the British Business Group met, and what are the significant changes or developments that you've noted from your vantage point? See, the, uh, the first big advantage or the first big difference is that the new government has come in in the last four to five months. And with this government coming in, a lot of uh, optimism has been built. Optimism has been built into the, uh, amongst the business community in the entire eco environment. And, and the mood is quite different to what it was, say, about six months back. So that's the first big change. Then we had the budget which came in. And uh, while it uh, created a lot of hype and a lot of expectations, it may not have met all the expectations there, but it still had some really good points to take forward in terms of FDI being allowed in insurance, being upped in insurance and defense. And it also allowed uh, for 100% um, uh, FDI into railways, infrastructure in railways, uh, on a PPP basis. So I think there have been a lot of uh, movements or a lot of uh, announcements been made by the government in that right. respect. What are the new opportunities that you see uh, arising out of these on the Indo-British corridor, uh, Richard? If you look at the British, uh, UK has some really large defense companies. And with the defense sector going up from 26 to 49% is definitely an opportunity. While there's, a, uh, there's another thing in small print which people have, may not have read, that on a case-to-case -case basis, they will allow 100% in uh, uh, companies which bring uh, high-end high, uh, high -end technology uh, into the defense sector, and that will be done on a case-to-case -case basis. Secondly, they have removed 60% uh, of the licenses are gone. There are few cases where licenses are required. Now, this will enable a lot of Indian companies uh, having a joint venture along with British companies and going out. The third big change they brought in Earlier, they said that 51% the Indian part had to be held by one group. Now they have uh, relaxed that and they said, okay, it could, be, uh, uh, it could be a multiple of Indian groups which could actually come together to uh, contain the 51%. And considering that India's defense industry is going to go through a major overall uh, and a lot of uh, this thing is expected here, which is combined with the Make in India campaign which the Prime Minister launched, I think there's a big opportunity for defense companies to look at India very seriously and look and say what is the potential they could look out here in terms of uh, the Indian defense market and also becoming part of the global supply chain. So both ways it could be looked at because India can become an attractive destination and the government is trying to put uh, policies and procedures in place to help uh, move in this direction. From a more specific uh, tax and oil point of view, I mean, there are obviously a lot of uh, uh, issues which are still hanging, uh, in a manner of speaking. Uh, what are your key uh, concerns among them and how could those be resolved uh, if they have to be? Uh, one of the biggest key concerns uh, for any foreign investor has been this Vodafone retrospective tax amendment and which has come and it's still hanging fire out there. And uh, there was a lot of expectation that government would reverse it, but which did not happen. So that is one definite issue out there. But taking what the finance minister said uh, was that he will try to bring and say that there will be no more cases coming where retrospective amendments will come in, unless it's really required, number one. And uh, the, uh, the other one is people are looking for stability in the tax regime. They are looking, the one point which they did not touch upon was on GAR. Now, GAR is exempt till next year. They have not brought any clarity as to whether this will continue to be exempt for another one or two years or will the exemption go next year. The third big thing which people were expecting was some statement around GST. While there is a lot of talk on GST, there has been no clear mandate out there as to when GST will come. And so I think that's... Uh, 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 the, I think from a tax angle, this would be some of the things that I looked at. But on the other side, he's brought some clarity around uh, on the, on the uh, TDS, on the tax, withholding tax, on the, uh, P, on the FIs, which is allowed. So I think some, some positive statements he's made out there, which is good for the investment community. The other, good, the other point uh, which uh, we could look at is uh, how can uh, 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 the government actually come out 
with uh, things around dealing with this retrospective amendment if they come out with something in the new budget uh, which is expected in uh, by february march i think that would uh, definitely send some positive signals and and you're really looking ahead i can see uh, what are the other areas i mean if, uh, uh, if, if are there any new themes that uh, from an either an investment or collaboration point of view that you would like to touch upon i mean since uh, we're already i mean at this i mean we're already uh, second half of 2014 and we still have uh, a runway for the financial year. So uh, uh, I think uh, uh, considering that lot of focus on the infrastructure sector, I think there would be a, a huge amount of uh, and UK companies having very high technology and design companies in UK, they could come into India and collaborate with the Indian partners in the infrastructure side secondly with all these corridors being revived in india the the four corridors which we are talking about the delhi mumbai the kolkata amritsar corridor and the uh, uh, chennai bangalore corridor these are all going to require a huge amount of uh, uh, you know technology design planning and a lot of the uk companies could look at this as positively to come in here and actually be part of this great story as infrastructure gets built out another important point i'd like to point out is modi announced the prime minister announced a was the 100 smart cities is talking about so that could be another place where they could have a role to play from a technology point of view you know bringing that technology out here to these as these smart cities get built out right and uh, uh, is there any anything that you would like to highlight from a you know i mean if if you were to look at a more 5 to 10 year perspective uh, uh, things that we need to start working on which uh, will eventually pay off i mean this could be in general or it could be in the indo british context uh, i think the uh, the important point that india needs is uh, number one india service sector is very strong i think we need to continue to grow it so i think there needs to be some uh, uh, clarity on retail i think that's a big sector and there needs to be a clarity as to uh, fdi and retail as to what is the government's clear stance on it and how is it going to uh, you know play out because that itself will create jobs Uh, on the second one is on the tourism sector which could be big from a country point of view and the third one of course the manufacturing sector which has been neglected for a long long time and one important uh, point which i would uh, like to put out here is the play which is going to take place as we go forward is going to be the internet of things because technology is going to be the biggest disruptor so how can uh, technology be used in different forms and you know whether it is uh, telecom uh, merging with financial services we're talking of financial inclusion and with 4g etc coming in whether this will ultimately become a game changer in way uh, trade is done marketing is done and actually goods move in india richard uh, thank you so much for speaking with us thank you thank you govind